This is what I'm calling cozy science. Let's talk about the cosmic speed limit, or the speed of light. 115 years ago, Hermann Minkowski gave a lecture titled Space and Time. You see, he had realized that space and time could be unified into a single four-dimensional continuum, Minkowski space-time. Einstein's theory of general relativity was able to show that this space-time is curved, and the amount of curve depends on the way mass and energy is distributed throughout the universe. General relativity is an extension of special relativity, which is a physical theory of the relationship between space and time. One of the cornerstones of Einstein's theory of special relativity is that the speed of light in a vacuum is always constant and is the same for all observers, no matter their relative motion. Now, this has been verified by many experiments. So no object within space-time can move faster than the speed of light. But it doesn't prevent space-time itself from contracting or expanding at superluminal speeds. Space-time is not matter. It is not information. It can change at any rate. To travel faster than light, you'd simply have to break relativity, which goes against everything we have observed, measured and understood about physics for the last 100 years. So relativity tells us that the speed of light is constant and is the same for all forms of energy without mass. So gluons, which are the carriers of the strong force and gravitational waves, which carry gravitational energy, these forms of energy also travel at our cosmic speed limit, the speed of light. Relativity also tells us that an object with mass, so you or I or spaceship, will never be able to accelerate to the speed of light due to relativistic mass increase. Basically, the faster you go, the more energy you need to go faster. As our velocity approaches the speed of light, the relativistic mass approaches infinity. This implies that it would require an infinite amount of energy to accelerate an object with mass to the speed of light. And since we can't supply an infinite amount of energy, we can't accelerate a mass to the speed of light. All experiments and observations so far are consistent with this principle. Even high energy particles in particle accelerators, when given more energy, their mass increases as described by relativity. They never exceed the speed of light. So if we wanted to travel at the speed of light, we need to have no mass. But even with no mass, we can't exceed the speed of light. In the geometry of space-time, the speed of light acts as a kind of boundary between events that can be causally connected and those that cannot. The concept of causality, the principle that cause precedes effect, is fundamental to our understanding of the universe. If information or objects could travel faster than light, it would create scenarios where cause and effect could be reversed for some observers, leading to logical paradoxes. But even if we found a way to violate causality, to provide infinite energy, could we ever get beyond that barrier, go beyond C? Let's think this through with time dilation and length contraction, two foundations of relativity. So time dilation says that time appears to move slower for an object that is moving relative to an observer. This means that if someone were to travel near the speed of light in space and then return to Earth, they would age less than people who remained on Earth. Length contraction says that objects are shortened in the direction of their motion relative to an observer. This means that to a stationary observer, a spaceship traveling near the speed of light would appear shorter in the direction of its motion. Put simply, for a photon traveling at the speed of light, time is dilated so that no clock ticks and length is contracted so that no distance is observed. When a photon moves from one place to another, no matter the distance we measure, for the photon, it's instantaneous. You cannot travel faster than light because there is nothing faster than no time passing as you cross a distance contracted to nothing. Think about it this way. It takes eight minutes for the light to reach us from the sun. If you got in a spaceship right now that could travel at sea to the sun, it wouldn't take you eight minutes. It would be nothing. Not a second would pass for you. You cannot travel faster than that. 
Where we get caught up with science fiction and this concept of faster than light travel is that it's travel relative to us, to the stationary observer on Earth. We watch you travel for eight minutes. We know it took you eight minutes of our time. The point I'm trying to make is that if you want to travel the universe, you don't need a spaceship that is faster than light. If you can travel at sea, you can go anywhere across space and time in an instant. The problem is what you'll find when you get there. Time is relative. Faster than light travel shouldn't be about spaceships that go faster than sea. It should be about finding a way to slow down time for the rest of the universe. Thanks for joining me for Cozy Science.